All right. Do you guys have any uh, positives or frustrations you want to start sharing? Just uh, how's well, your year been? Ours has actually been pretty good. We're, I feel like we've been, I'm a knock on wood, relatively lucky. The high school got hammered with COVID pretty good at the beginning of the year. And they just went masks on for three weeks and they're, you know, like I said, knock on wood, staying healthy elementary school. We've only had, we had to do one room. We put them on isolation where they're like in their room. They can't, they, they weren't allowed to intermingle for two weeks because we had a couple of cases pretty quick back to back and otherwise. And that seemed to contain it. Yeah. Yeah. And I said those last two days when masks were about to come off, I, I, the first thing I would do about nine 15 after attendance was official, I'd log into power school. And I look, I'd look at Mrs. Kelly's room to see who is at school. I'm like, all right, they're all here. Thank God. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, good. Good. Dave, how are things going there? Uh, they're going good. The biggest frustration is finding subs to cover classes. Uh, I'd say at least two to three times a week we're short subs and covering people in house, and so that's been real tough on our teachers and and staff. So I had someone else asking, um, and maybe with Stanton being a little bit closer, um, do you get any? um college students subbing we try to get some out of wayne state yeah uh, for the nenta program but yeah. they're so hit and miss uh, they're usually our last resorts yeah that's what someone was asking me about that dave um, Dr. Cunningham I just want to give Stanton a little shout out they were at um, our MTSS day yesterday great conversations were being had um, just great thoughts were being shared and thank you for allowing them to come to that day it was great to um, hear all the amazing conversations and problem solving that was happening good thank you I apologize I was not there I was supposed to be with them but my son decided to tear up his shoulder and we had to go see the orthopedics so you know what that is okay I totally understand that and you would have been so proud of them so thank you Aaron do you have anything you want to share about your year so far really the year has been pretty well or going pretty well and um, we've had a ramp up of cases this past two weeks and so um, this is really the first time we've had multiple elementary kids out for COVID, um, which is a change for us. Last year, we only had a few high school kids. Um, they seem to be pretty family oriented. We have seen that kind of groupings. It doesn't seem to spread to the whole class. Um, so we're just working on that again. You know, just when you think you're done Zooming with kids here, it, it came right back to us. Otherwise, we end the quarter this week, so. Yay, that's kind of exciting, isn't it? It is, it is. Excellent. Um, I'm just going to give a little bit of a Marzano update. As we went around to um, fall visits, we heard a lot of um, uh, schools say that it would be nice to maybe to bring um, someone from Marzano back out. Um, in particular, Phil, Dr. Phil Warwick, who we've had in the past. And so I kind of did a survey of schools and um, based on um, the results, we are looking at bringing um, Dr. Mar or Dr. Um, Warwick out on August 11th and 12th. Um, we have several schools that are new to Marzano that haven't been through it. Um, I believe Elk, or, um, Newman Grove was one of those. And we have a few others, um, almost a, a pretty close split of the schools I've heard from so far. So that August 11th, we were, were looking at schools that are new to Marzano, um, kind of, we know that you can't get it all in a day, but we would follow up and support schools. And then that August 12th would be schools 
that are already using Marzano, a little bit of just a kind of a refresher touch base where you're at and then advanced ideas. Um, so that's what we're looking at at this point. Um, we'll kind of hammer out what those days will look like um, better um, down the road, but um, I'm working on a, a contract and then that'll be um, divided amongst the schools. And so we're looking at doing a MOU, a memorandum of understanding that if you commit that's price will be split. So I'm following up with schools on that right now. So any questions or ideas of how those days would, would look for you guys? You know, I don't, O'Neill probably wouldn't attend since we kind of do our own Marzano thing. But I guess one thing I would suggest is um, whoever meets with them, it might not be a bad idea to ask the other buildings where they're at because like we had a new presenter this year and she kind of went over a lot of stuff that we'd already done before, which made the training yep. less than desirable for our staff. Yeah. So. And Jim, I will tell you, there's been a little talk about um, maybe doing a leadership day with high reliability schools and stuff, maybe on into the school year next year. So if something comes of that, we will um, let you guys know about that. I we'd be I know I'd be interested in that. So Thank yeah, you. yeah. Um, another thing. When we went through, we talked about letters for the administrator um, and Norfolk Public was wanting to maybe host a cohort um, of that. They have about seven, but it would be nice to have more. I know, Jim, that I have your name down on that. It's shorter than the actual letters. Um, I didn't pull up the information now. Um, Aaron, I know you're working on getting your school um, signed up for letters next year. So this might be something, it would be two days in the summer. And yeah, I would, I would like to know those dates, um, but I have that tentatively marked down that I would like to attend. Great. Um, I don't know the dates, but I'm going to um, pass names and emails on to Beth Nelson at Norfolk, and then she'll be the one following up with those dates and stuff. She's going to coordinate. Okay. Um, and as far as the Marzano, yeah, the, the whole staff training for us would be new. We've had some teachers attend bits and pieces. But if, 11, if August 11th is the date, we're just going to build that into our calendar. That's what we wanted to do it early enough that people could get that built in. Yes. Okay. So um, it will be confirming those um, in the next, that's, I'm working on that right now. So. Okay. Thank yep. you. Yep. And Dave, I know I need to talk to Sarah, but I know that they have, um, some some teachers that have gone through letters and um, we talked to her about um, whether she wanted full school training or those kind of things in the elementary. So we'll follow up with her there. Letters, if you're not familiar, is primarily for primary teachers. Um, and then the, the second um, letters two kind of gets to your upper grades, but you have to go through letters one, two, before. Um, Perkins, I think that... Um, Katrina, you put that in there. Yes. So, um, and I'm, I don't think it uh, applies to anybody in this meeting right now, but um, awards letters were sent out to schools for teachers who had um, written an uh, application for Perkins grant this year. And um, those letters went out to those teachers. And um, I just asked them to make sure they shared it with their principals uh, and superintendents. Um, so, there's that, but then there's also the next round of Perkins just to be um, talking to your CTE teachers. There will be another needs assessment coming from the state, um, but uh, be thinking about uh, working with your CTE teachers at the high school if there are some needs um, that can meet the CTE standards um, and needs assessment that your school does. If you're not sure, I'd be happy to visit with you individually about that. Um, but also leading into the next thing, I'm having a CTE workshop. Um, it's hyperlinked. The flyer there is uh, going to be in December. We are bringing in two speakers from the Angler Entrepreneurship Program at UNL, specifically for CTE teachers to talk about weaving in um, entrepreneurship mindsets into the CTE classroom, which we can tie directly to uh, programs of study and um, the CTE standards and then Perkins ultimately. 
they're great speakers. And if that's uh, something you could share, I already shared, I'm going to be sharing it out with teachers directly, but letting you know about it, uh, it's a great opportunity. And then also in December, we're having a social studies workshop, workshop specifically on the inquiry design model, which is a big component of the 2019 social studies standards and the instructional shifts that came with those standards. So I'm having a workshop in December uh, for the inquiry design model to help teachers uh, make that transition if they need some assistance in that area. Um, and I've sent that information out to teachers already, but also um, I've got some really great feedback from teachers about maybe needing some assistance with um, revising social studies curriculum. So if uh, you wanna talk to your social studies teachers and they feel like that's a service I could help them with, um, please feel free to reach out and I'd love to work with them. Thanks, Katrina. Any questions for her? Um, 3D printer rotation. <clears throat> we got to be part of the Nucor um, grant this time around. And so I have printers to 3D printers to um, rotate through my schools. Stanton already has, they're part of the original grant. So this would um, be for any of those schools, not directly right around Norfolk. Um, it's tailored for seventh and eighth grade students. They get to build a 3D printer. They um, get to use it and then um, disassemble it and we rotate it onto another school. I have a website built. Um, I've got to pick up some more filament. We're about ready to start our rotations um, with it, sending it out. But I need to know a contact person um, from your school that, that I can send information to um, decide, you know, when they want to be in the rotation, if you want. Um, my plan is then after the schools that go through, um, and use them after the year of the grant, then we'll put, um, at least one of those 3D printers into your school that you can just have. So you can talk to your, um, seventh, eighth grade, could be a librarian, could be a, if you've got an after school STEM person, um, but it needs to, the grant was originally written for seventh and eighth grade students. So it kind of has to somehow make sure that they're involved in it. But then anyone in the whole school could use it also while you have it. Uh, winter workshop, I've sent out the pre presentation submission form. Um, just kind of promote that with your teachers. Um, if you got some teachers doing some great things, we would love to hear from them and have them share at the winter workshop. And then um, I'm just game to hear some topics for future meetings. I tried to get Jeremy Henninger from um, NDE here, and I'll try and get him for our November one to kind of, kind of talk about the ends cast and the new um, recording or um, recording, I, um, the new um, reporting of that and how that's going to look. But um, I haven't got that confirmed with him yet, but I would take other topics that you uh, would be interested in. Well, I feel like, you know, like with the assessment is just always changing. And if we could find out more, that'd be great. Yeah, I was hoping you would be here, be able to come today, but. Um... That's the biggest thing is the assessment. Yeah. And then also we we used to use easy CBM math for a screener for math. I guess this is more of a question. What does everybody else use for their elementary students for? Because we use we use we use maps, but it'd be nice to have one more assessment. We use the Acadians math piece for K6. How's it work? This is our third year okay and um i really like it it has taken teachers a little bit to get used to it and accept it you have to go in with the understanding that we know that these math concepts might not be taught to the kids when you're giving them the assessment so so you get some teachers who kind of struggle with that right um but it's a good refresher the progress monitor monitoring booklets i think 
are great because even though you're teaching kids math throughout the year, you review some things and you kind of forget about others. And so it's a good, um, they have a concepts and application progress monitoring book for our, the second through sixth grade, maybe. Um, and the, the lower elementary kids, it's a good review of skills. Okay. I don't even know what the cost is. If you already have the reading, I don't think it was that much more to get the math. Right. I think I saw it was like a dollar a kid. I mean, the, yeah. cost, the cost wouldn't be a gigantic issue. I'm just sitting there going. We needed, we needed data points for, for elementary math. Right. I'm just sitting here thinking 407 students, another sit down three times yep. a year. That's going to be a lot different. We only have a hundred students for that, that okay. level. I actually have a para who's pretty much in charge of giving the benchmarks for the K2 because okay. she is an outstanding math person. And so she pulls those kids. When I have um, my special education teacher and myself and our school psychologist, we do the reading benchmarks. Then that takes my special education teacher out of the classroom. So when I pull my para, we kind of give her chunks of time during that week to do it. And it seems to work for us. Okay. Mr. York, I just have a question for you. Do yes. you guys offer, um, after assessments have been taken, do your teachers sit down as a team and look at who needs retaught and um, structure math interventions that way? Um, not math yet. We, we, I need to find time to put math interventions officially on the schedule. That's the hardest part. But we do that with, we do that with our um, reading. And then with our math, what we do is we look at what whole classrooms more need, need the most. Um, and then, and then we focus on that, um, during our, uh, there's a, about a 10 to 15 minute block at the beginning of the period where they focus on developing skills. Um, I know, I don't want to put another thing on your plate, but, um, I might email you. I am kind of looking for a school to partner with, to, to try some things with some intervention, um, with math specifically really with not necessarily sending them out to another room, but doing oh. in the classroom. Um, uh -huh. So I'm just kind of getting a feel for that. Yeah, that'd be, if you have anything, that'd be great. Cause my teachers have been, I mean, they're searching for some things they can do to help with math interventions. So that'd be great. I, yeah, I am going to send you a short email and then if you have time to call me talking about it would be better, but um, oh, I'll send I you a short email. That sounds great. Thank you. Yep. Other topics for future meetings that you'd like to have here or suggestions of um, people bringing people in like the assessment people from NDE? I see Patty's joined us. Patty, do you have anything or you wanna share any wins or frustrations from your year? Um, we're just really struggling with the same thing that everybody else is, you know, we we're down to kitchen staff members and we, we don't have anybody to, to do it. So I'm actually serving in the lunch line. So I, and I don't, I don't know how we fix that. You know, we don't have subs. We, we don't have bus drivers like Brandon has to leave to go drive a bus and then I have to fill in for his IEP meetings. It's just been a long last month because we don't have those people. We've had two quit in the last probably maybe a month. So yeah. academically, we're doing okay, <laughs> hanging in there. Our new math um, is getting a little easier. We're not hearing as many complaints about Eureka math. Um, we changed our science for our middle grades to um, where they'll rotate. We have physical life and earth. And so um, we have changed that series for our six, seven, and eight. And so those teachers will just rotate that materials around and they each just teach that part of the book so that they're getting physical life earth all at the same shot instead of 
you do it one year and then you go to the next subject and then the next year you go to the next one. So that's actually going pretty well. Other than that. Yeah, Patty, we are still struggling to fill our para positions in both our learning centers. Um, so we hear you there. And those that are working there are frustrated because it's tough when they're trying to take on more. So yeah. um, we did, um, I think that maybe you guys did too at the board meeting approved to raise the base for those paras. So hopefully that'll help and attract some. We, we just did that. Um, it's across the board. Um, the only ones that were exempt from that um, pay raise. And it's gonna be, you know, for some people like three and $4, it's gonna, it's gonna cost us, but you know, I, I, I usually do lunch duty and I watch kids and going back into the kitchen has given me, you know, a, a whole new perspective because I actually have to stand in the lunch line and I have to go grab food out of the refrigerator and put it on the line and yeah, <laughs> a whole new perspective for what those people do. We yeah. did get two pairs hired though. Good, good. But I'm very excited about our science because I wasn't sure how we would handle that, um, but it's actually going pretty well. I have my sixth grade teacher that's kind of the driving force and she kind of pushes the seventh and eighth grade teachers to get in there and get it done. Tell me again, what was the series? Um, we went with iScience. iScience. Not Inspire, it's called iScience, yep, from McGraw-Hill. And they have a middle school. It's it's actually a separate life and earth and physical science textbook, but then they each, I mean, it takes some planning and they have to organize who's teaching what and what grade six focuses on and what grade seven focuses on most, but they still get a splattering of all of it. So we'll see in the next couple of years how our science scores change in six, seven, and eight. Good. Well, Aaron, David, anything that you uh, would like to see on future topics of these meetings? Not at this point in time. No, I don't think so. All right, well, I know you guys' time is valuable. Um, I will send out the recording to those that, that couldn't make it and um, just, Send me ideas if you have something that comes up along the way before we meet the next time and we will certainly get it on the agenda or find someone who can speak to it. Thank you. All right, well, you guys have a great uh, rest of your day. Thank you.